Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the MBS Show. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today will be Emilio Daniel. Hello! So, how are you, Emilio? Uh, <laughs> I've been messing up my biological clock way too much lately, but I'm okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Joining us today is Daniel Anthony. Hi, everybody. So, Daniel, how are you? Well, I'm great. The Anthony family finally decided to buy a dishwasher. Oh. So I'm waiting to install a big subwoofer in it. <laughs> That's bad for the environment, by the way. <laughs> it actually saves water. You would break all your dishes. <laughs> Nothing's broken yet. And that lovely voice is Tashirina. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Just going crazy with all this pony research that I'm doing. But hey, love and friendship is one way to go. Alright. Our guest for this special episode is none other than the man that's brony in the world, Dusty Cat Rhodes. He is the host for Stay Brony, my friends, exclusively on EFR. Not only is he the man that's brony in the world, he is also a very talented singer, able to seduce all the ladies around him. You can catch him in action at youtube.com slash dustycat. Listen to him share his story and experience and learn a few things along the way. <laughs> Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is me. This is Dusty. Um, thank you very much for having me here. Um, I'm sure we're going to have a great time. And yeah, I'm, I'm an adequate singer and I try to make people laugh. That's what I do. Uh, that's good to know. Well, you're very successful at it. Well, I try. <laughs> a little clarification for the words uh, seducing all the ladies. Maybe, maybe even the guys might be a bit onto it too. <laughs> all, all, all the mares come to my barn. Uh, <laughs> Guilty as charged. <laughs> well, luckily we got one lady. Uh, so, Dusty, would you like to talk about your show before we start? Sure. On Monday evenings, that's uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time U.S., I do a little live show called Stay Brony, my friends, on the Everfree Radio Network. And you can go to everfreeradio.com and go along in the IRC chat and also with the live stream. As I'm live speaking to a guest every week. Last week I didn't have a guest because I had a special going on. But uh, people like Pixel Kitties and, and people like this that I interview. And then halfway through the show, I throw the gates open to the chat room and they get to answer, they, we get to ask us questions that we'll answer. And we could go for about an hour and a half. Um, I usually come up with some sort of comedy commercial or video for entertainment every week. And uh, that's about it. You know, we just basically take questions from people and we have a great time for about an hour and a half every week. Oh, that's cool. Um, I have to say something about your show before we start, and please don't kill me. Um, I like your show on EFR Radio's YouTube page because I can see what's going on, but on mm-hmm. iTunes, it's a bit disjointed. Yeah, iTunes wants to do something weird with it. I mean, we put it up straight and iTunes cuts it up for some reason. That's all Atrack's doing. He takes care of the uploads, so I have to, I have to ask him what's going on with that. Yeah, have because... you considered like, putting it in a video podcast on iTunes? Um, that's up to them. So I basically, I'm the talents. I make the show and they, they, they produce the show and put it wherever it needs to be. So. I see. Before we start with the Q&A, we have to ask four basic questions. It's considered okay. a toll to get through the show. The four main questions. Yes. Question number one is, who's your favorite pony? You can pick up to three if you like. Cheerily. Everybody Bro, knows to that. <laughs> yes. Cheerily is my favorite pony because I dated her in high school. Oh my. Yes. Ooh. We graduated. We graduated the same year. You still keep in contact with her? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Always. Yep. I get I get a Twitter from her like once a week. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, um, what's your favorite episode? Um, uh, it's a toss up, really. Um, Dress for Success, Sweet and Elite, um, Sonic Rain Boom. That's interesting. So, uh, which episode would you recommend a new brony to watch first? Um, it depends on that particular brony. I mean, if that if I think that person is going to be more into action, I would give them one of the action episodes. If I think they're more into, you know, story, I would probably give them uh, give them a different one. Um, but normally, I start people off with like Sonic Rain Boom or with uh, Dress for Success because basically almost anybody who sees Rarity fall back on the bed and whine about not knowing what to wallow in <laughs> is usually hooked. Hi, <laughs> true. But uh, how about maybe you know that's the question when. A hater gives you one chance. Oh, and a hater gives me one chance? Yes. Then there's, uh, you know, if a hater gives me one chance to, to prove to them that the show is worth 
worthy of their time, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to tell them to go do something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. because, because they're not going to change their mind. And, and if you're not going to give, if you're not going to give a series more than one episode, just go do something else. Because mm-hmm. you know, you're not here for the right reason. If you're here to find out what's going on with this, watch four or five episodes to, to see it uh, develop as characters, and then get into the characters, then yeah, fine. But if somebody needs to tell you, oh, I want one episode to, to, to basically change my mind. Well, just go do something. I want to be here. All right. So the next question is, how did you become a fan of the show? The story about that is I had moved from California to Nevada, which is one state over, uh, to take a job. And I was missing my friends here in San Jose. And the gentleman I'm rooming with now, uh, Care to Win, the guy who helps me with most of my stuff, was having an advanced Dungeons & Dragons campaign that he was running. So I would cycle or my truck five hours back and forth between Nevada and California to come back and play the game once a month. And one session after the session, like midnight, he says, you got to watch this show. Come here, you got to watch this show. I said, what are, what are you going to have me watch? He said, we're going to watch My Little Pony. And I went, what? What? <laughs> but what? It, the thing was, he and I known each other for 20 years. And we know each other's tastes. And we've been in different fandoms together. Mm-hmm. So I said, I, I trust his judgment. I said, like, if, if he thinks I'm going to like something, I'll like it. So I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. So he sat me down for the two-part premiere. And then we watched until like 4 a.m. <laughs> we went all the way through Sonic Rain Boom. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I need to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so we watched we watched a goodly part of the first season, you know, in the first sitting. So it was, a, it was pretty fun. Wow, that's a very cool story. The next question is, and the last one, is what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? Some of my friends think I'm nuts, uh, but these are people in other fandoms who are also nuts, so I don't really, <laughs> you know, no big deal there. My family think it's awesome. My parents have always supported me in just about anything I've ever done, from you know moving away and taking jobs and being away from them for so long, but uh, anything I've ever done, um, they've always supported me, between, whether it was baseball, football, hockey, going to college, you know. Whatever, and my parents have always been been very supportive of me. And then my local friends, the people I work with, uh, think it's a gas because they've actually seen most of my videos <laughs> and uh, think it's funny. So uh, everything everything you see uh, revolving around that is fine. Everybody thinks it's pretty good. Okay, that's cool. Shall we start with the Q and A now? Sure. Amita, why don't you start off with your questions? All right. So Desi Cat, my first question for you is. Do you find the acceptance of ponies in your life a factoring point towards your overall happiness nowadays? Yes. I was a very angry old man <laughs> wow. a couple of years ago. Were you like the uh, get off my lawn kind of guy? No, no, it was it was <laughs> that I I was doing very well in my life and then, you know, the economy happened. Ooh. And then oh, here I see. States, and I lost my job, I lost a couple of jobs. And was basically hand to mouth for a very long time. Unemployment, all that stuff. Then I had to move to Nevada and take a job I didn't want to take just because it was a job. And I was very far away from all my friends. I was very, I was basically living alone and not a whole lot of friends over there. And it was, it was a very bad, sad, dark time in my life. And then I would come back for this game and my friend showed me the show and it basically turned me around. It was one of those things where like, you know, it's not all bad. It's not all that bad. You know, yes, you're in a position now, but you can change that. And just, it just takes some more effort and some more time. So basically, I turned just about you know all of my frown upside down, if you want to take Pinkie Pie's line for it, and spent a good part of the next three months getting my butt back here to California so I could de- take a decent job and, and get back with my friends. And it worked. So uh, yeah, I, I would say that it did t- help turn my life around. My little pony because some kind of yoga for the soul. <laughs> Second question is, what is your favorite brony moment? My favorite brony moment? Hmm. Uh huh. That's kind of a loaded question because there's a whole lot of really good ones. Um, <laughs> I would have to say Mando Pony's Equestria song was right. probably you know one of those things where I finally saw the Brony fandom as being more than it could be, more than it was. The uh, Long Way from Equestria, is it? Yeah, Long Way from Equestria. And when you saw it, when you heard that song, and it was professional quality. It was like released to the public, million selling quality song. It made me cry. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, things like Pony Phonics, um, Pony Phonics music. It's like, these are the things that, you know, are signposts in the road of Brony Phantoms. Like, this is what it can be. So, I would say when I first heard Mando Pony's 
uh, Equestria song it was probably the, the the thing that told me that I could do something and people would like it if I put a little more effort to it and made it a little more professional. And I do every day. And Mando, I got my end to thank for it. I gotta agree, because actually that's kind of the same story with me, because it's the exact same song I first listened to from Mando, and that this is what really made me believe that, wow, we, we we're doing some really amazing stuff, might as well mm-hmm. be there and check them all out. Because everyone's doing something really, really cool. Like Mando, there's acoustic, there's toaster, mm-hmm. mic- microphone, there's like all this crazy stuff coming on, and it's all so cool, like professional quality. Yeah, I met I met Mike at a local convention here back in January, and, and he's about as crazy as in real life as he is with the music. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure. Tash, would you like to ask your questions? Yeah, sure. So, Dusty, I've watched your ministering video. Excellent job. Thank you. Very masterful. I plan to try that out myself one day. <laughs> I've just got a query about what's your favorite comfort food? My favorite comfort food? Yeah. Mm, chili dogs. I am chili a Coney dogs. Island chili dog master. I any, any Anywhere I go, any city I, I go to, I have to find the best Coney Island in town. And I go have a Coney Island chili dog. And I Because I'm from Detroit. Detroit is like the center of chili, chili dog, you know, world. Okay? Mm-hmm. So... I, whenever I go to a new area, I go find the Coney Island, and I find out if it's chili is worth anything. And then I will, you know, put that in my mental list so that if I ever go back to that place, I go to that that restaurant. Love Coney Island food. That's that's my comfort food because I'm from Detroit, and it's 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 all Coney Islands there. So I'm, I miss them because we don't have a very good one here out out in California. You know, we just don't. So whenever I go back to Detroit, first thing I do, I go to my local Coney Island. Well, maybe you could start your own stand or something like that. I've been in the restaurant business. It doesn't make money. <laughs> you want to make a million dollars in the restaurant industry? Bring five. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you guys brought up food in the morning. I haven't even seen food yet. Thank you very much for making me angry. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> okay, cool. Chili dogs. All right, on to the next question. Considering that you've done quite a few parodies of songs and commercials and stuff like that, what leads you to actually choose a song to parody, like with all the great possibilities available? Because I know with myself, when I hear a song that I like or something, I just think, oh, this song, Ponified or Bonified, would be amazing. But then it's like that production thing as well. Mm -hmm. There's three separate qualities on a song. One, it has to be in my voice range. I can't sing Celine Dion. Okay, I just can't. Um, it has to have a story. Story songs are much, much better what they call filk. Change the lyrics into something else. Because it basically tells a story, and you can get the memory of the original song, and then you've got the story of the new song. So it has a bit better hook into the human psyche if you do that. And three, it just has to be a song that, that resonates within my soul, with what I do. Because every song I've done is a song that I love. A song that I loved from my childhood or a song I love today. So if it's a song that does not, you know, speak to me, I'm not going to do it. It just doesn't. It's I'm just not used to it. Because I'm, I'm in this to have fun. And if I'm going I'm to do a song that I like, and I'm going to put all that time, effort, and work into it, then it's going to be something I want to do. It's not gonna, I'm not just going to have somebody throw me a song and say, do this song. Well, I don't want to do that song. Because one, it's out of my voice ranger, I don't like that song. So everything I do is it has to resonate with me somehow. Wow, that's deep. I'm just in awe right now. <laughs> but yeah, that, those are really good tips for anyone who's like you know creating if that. Way. If it's not fun, don't do it. It's yeah. rule one. If you're not having fun, why are you doing it? Now so. that is a philosophy right there. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's how the show is based on. If we're not having fun, why do it? Having fun, why do it? So, okay, um, Daniel, would you like to ask your questions? Mm, yeah, sure. Um, actually, before I ask, i got to tell you, Dusty, you remind me of Adam Savage. Really? <laughs> Adam Savage? <laughs> From <laughs> Mythbusters. I mean, yeah. Have you seen Adam Savage, how he looks like? I mean, I, I think you mean Jamie Heineman. You mean Jamie Heineman. I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, wrong one. I confused the two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Jamie is very short. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm so you remind you of a walrus. <laughs> Yeah, my, my mustache is nowhere near Walrus. Yes. I mean, he has, he has the, his whiskers go down past his bottom lip. I have no idea how he eats with that mustache. I mean, the first time I saw, you know, uh, a video of you, I was like, oh my God, Jamie Heinemann's a brony. 
Well, me shaving my head is only a, a recent addition to my my look. I actually did that in April. Yeah, oh, I know. So. I, I started watching uh, Stay Brony. My friends only about then. Ah. Because before this, I didn't really have a very stable internet connection, mm-hmm. so I couldn't stream anything, and iTunes would take forever to download something. So uh, my first question is: uh, Since you're in the motorbike industry, do you have a ponified motorcycle? Um, actually, you know, I, I put Rainbow Dash's cutie mark on my race bike. Wow! Oh, cool. And nobody nobody has noticed it yet. Oh. So basically, it's like right on the uh, number plates. You know um, how it would be on the hips on a oh, okay. on a pony. The back number plates are about where the hips would be on a pony. So I stuck Rainbow Dash's cutie marks on my number plates. Cool. Um, a random question: What kind of race bike do you ride? I ride a two thousand a year two thousand Yamaha. YZ 426F four-stroke dirt bike Ooh. that I bored to a 444, ported the heads, hot cams, heavy-duty clutch system. Yeah, it's a race bike. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, locally over here, everyone tries to, tries to race with Honda EX5. Actually, I'd like to also ask you, what is your working experience like with Everfree Radio? It's awesome. They allow me to do whatever I want. You know, They don't tell me to do anything. As long as I come up with a format... And I keep it PG rated, which I do. Then I can do just about anything I want. I mean, I've got ideas for different sketches in the show, or I have ideas for different segments of the show, which I haven't done yet. Basically, because you know what's going on right now, people like. So, you know, after like episode two episodes from now, I might change it up a little bit and do something different, just to make it fresh, just to come up with something. You know, because everyone knows that I like to read fan fiction, so I might Ooh. do some sort of se- some sort of segment on you know fan fiction of the week or something like that. I don't know yet. But uh, just come up with something different, something new. So what inspired you to start uh, Stay Brony, my friends? What's in the name of it? What inspired me is I, I actually ended up at Everfree Radio's, one of their live uh, Mando Pony shows. First time I went there, I went to I went to their IRC chat and put, put in my name Dusty Cat. And people said, no, you're not Dusty Cat. You're, Dusty Cat never comes. Or blah, 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 blah. And then <laughs> final, draft, final Draft came over and said, is that really you? It's like, yeah. How do you want me to prove it? He says, okay, well, we got on a Skype call and started talking to each other. And he said, well, it is you. I said, yeah. So he gives me special compensation in the IRC chat. And uh, he just said, I want to talk to you for a minute. I'm thinking he wants an interview. And it's like, okay, what's going on? He goes, do you want your own show? I was like, what? <laughs> that first thing out of his mouth is like, what are you talking about? He goes, no, no, no. We need, we're going to do this. We're going to have some more content. We're going to do live content. We're going to become more than just a podcast. We're going to do this, this, and this. And I said, really? He said, yeah, we want you to be part of it. It's like, okay, give me 24 hours. So I came back the next day and I said, well, I guess I could do interviews or things like that. And he said, yeah, well, you can do whatever you want. Just keep it PG-13 because Hasbro watches. It's like, whoa, 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 <laughs> hey, no pressure there. Uh, so a couple of weeks later, I, a guest, Denotive, who's a friend of mine, oh, and okay. came up with a, uh, a, a content and just basically ran with it. And it's just basically written itself now that we're eight episodes into it you know it's just sort of like okay i have these commercial things that i do that cut up that, that make sure that the people don't get bored you know it's like you have question and answer and then i have question and answer back and forth and and we spend about an hour and a half and before i know it the show's over i mean we're having so much fun it's like oh my god an hour and a half is gone so it just ends up writing itself as long as i'm having fun doing it and people continue to come and listen to it i'll just keep doing it well you always have me and your listeners oh thank you the next set of questions come from our news pony. Um, he's a bit shy and just wanted to put in questions instead of being on the show. So anyway, um, his first question is, how far ahead do you see the show going? As in, how many seasons do you think it will last? I'm predicting probably four to five. Okay, because just... they know they've got a tiger by the tail. They know they've got some popularity. So to get syndication, they only have to do 13 more episodes. That's all they have to do. But it's too popular. I mean, they're going to go past that 13. Will they get into season 5? That's stretching it. It depends on if the popularity keeps up. It depends on if the show is still good. Because, I mean, look at The Simpsons. The Simpsons is going on for 20 years. But mm. when they got to season 5 or 6, people were going, oh, it's going to end any time. But it was consistently good. So as long as DHX Media and the writers and everybody continue to make it consistently good, then I think it could go on for a good long time. Okay, I agree with you because the syndication thing is a way for a company to bundle buy their shows without paying more or expecting right. things to end. Oh, just look at Simpsons, it will never end. So um, the next question is, before you were into the MLP fandom, were you in any other fandom? 
Yes, yes, I was. I've been in and out of fandoms for 20-something years, starting with science fiction, and then Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then, you know, a couple other ones. So, yeah, I've been in and out of a lot of fandoms. I was in the Society of Creative Anachronism for a while, the SCA, which is, you call that a fandom, but it's more like an organization. So, um, comparing all those fandoms that you were in, um, how do you find the Brony fandom? Is it better than the others, or is, is, is it just the same? It's better than the others in certain ways. I've seen in the last month, it's starting to crack. It's starting to have some problems. And it depends on all of the bronies collectively to keep Ron or just start running around like chickens with their heads cut off. It just depends on people themselves. Do they want to hold their fandom together or they want, do they want it to fall apart? It depends on certain people doing certain things. I've told people, I've told a lot of people, it's like, Every fandom has had its problem children. Every one. Okay? It's had its problem people. It's had its problem issues. If you don't look at it, if you don't give it attention, if you don't want to see it, don't. Take some responsibility for your own happiness and just don't do it. Go take whatever you have, whatever's fun for you in this fandom, and go do that. You don't have to have your fingers in every piece of the fandom just because it's there. If you take your little corner of the fandom that you're having fun with and go do that. If somebody's having fun with the fandom doing something else and then you don't approve of it or you don't like it, let them do their thing. They're not hurting you. The only reason they're hurting you is because you're letting them hurt you. Because you think they're affronting you because of what they're doing. It's like, no, they're just off doing their thing. Whatever they want to do. You don't have to even give it attention. That's a lot of what's going on. Some people that are doing one thing in the fandom see this thing going on over here and oh, that's not my brony fandom, so you can't do that. Wait a minute, who are you to say that? True that, true you know? that. People have many... Who, but who made you king of the bronies? I mean, nobody's king of the bronies. I'm not king of the bronies. Nobody's king of the bronies. Lauren I don't Faust. do my thing. Now, Lauren Faust is the queen of the bronies, but there you go. I thought now, it was Tara Strong. The is Tara, Tara, Fa- Tara Strong, so... Yeah. <laughs> also, also queen of the tools okay she's <laughs> rolling <laughs> everyone but, yeah. but, but what do you think of you know that um, kind of stereotype that bronies are trolls I mean it's I mean when you're a brony you don't really see it but from the outside a lot of people have actually looked and you, they consider bronies like trolls in a way well like I said some of these people got into the fandom to do stupid things I mean some of the trolls turned over and aren't using brony as a troll issue it's like okay well that's not my brony fandom but I don't really care. Mm, you know? it, until those people directly affect my life, then I don't care. Trolls come onto my videos and say something stupid, ban hammer out of my video. That's a, I don't give them the time of day unless it's really funny to do so. <laughs> and then, you know, it's like, okay, you, you want to say something really stupid? Here, I'll make, I'll, I'll ban you and then say something funny and then everyone can laugh at your butt. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's it. But most of the hater stuff I get is like, ban hammer, remove, ban hammer, remove, ban hammer, remove. And I don't let it bug me because the only reason that would make my life difficult is if I let it. And there's those people cannot climb through an internet line and make my life a living hell unless I let them. It's something that everyone should take to heart. It's like, it doesn't matter what anybody says on the internet. It doesn't really freaking matter. Unless that person can find your address, come to your front door, and punch you in the nose, it means nothing. Not a dang thing. Okay, those are wise words to live by. Okay, um, his next question is, what was the craziest thing you done in regards to using ponies or the team of ponies? In the fandom? Um, I Within the fandom? I, I think it's within the fandom or outside the fandom. But let's just keep it in the fandom. Okay. Well, I took a really great wicker chair up to my buddy's house. In the, well, actually, I took, took it out into the Redwoods and took some footage of me in the Redwoods doing the manliest brony thing that footage we actually didn't use because it was too dark but basically i took the table and the and the pieces and the pony for characters in my awesome chair out in the middle of the california redwoods and did some lines out there but it was way too dark to use so basically we, we like spent an entire afternoon just traipsing around the california redwoods <laughs> trying to record the manliest brony in the world doing something so, yeah, that's about the craziest thing I've done so far. Well, I know how you feel. Recording in the dark is quite a problem to itself without the right lighting. I'm trying I'm trying to do these manliest brewing in the worlds and keep them fresh and interesting. And it's like, yeah, that's one of the things I want to do is, is take take it to different epic locations within California that I can get to. 
and then just do it. You know, I just say something and that have this great big vista in the background and say nothing about it. It's like, okay, this is where I am today. And just, you know, have it keep going that way. That way people can keep coming back. Go, where's he going to be next time? <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, his next question is, has ponies inspired you to do other things besides YouTube videos? Yeah. Singing. I, I used to sing a lot. I used to be a karaoke guy a lot and I stopped. And then I saw people like Mando and other people doing songs. I'm thinking, I sing. Let's see what I can do. I rewrote, you know, I rewrote a, a Billy Joel song and called it Trixie's Big Shot and sang it. And it just took off. People loved it. So I just kept doing it. And then the Manly Sproding came around. And, and now I go back and forth between singing and comedy and, and live show and whatever. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to do a bunch of different things, not do just one thing. Some people just do music, or some people just do comedy, or people just do you know a podcast. I do I do a lot of different things because it keeps it fresh. You know, if I'm not wanting to do, not, not wanting to do music today, I go and I film something. If I don't want to do filming something, I do music. You know, or, or whatever. It just it, it changes it daily and it keeps it fresh. Uh, Tash, why don't you take his next set of questions? Oh, cool, awesome. So few more questions from News Pony. Well, what do you work as and has Ponies influence you in it? At the moment, I work in the motorcycle industry as a Harley Davidson parts counterman at an aftermarket motorcycle store. So it hasn't really influenced me at all in my motorcycle end of it. As a motorcyclist, I've been a motorcyclist for, I mean, I'm 44 years old. I've been a motorcyclist for almost 35 years of my life. So I don't think ponies are going to influence me as a motorcyclist. Um, yes, I put rainbow dashes, cutie marks on my race bike. Other than that, not much else has influenced me as a brony in my job. Every now and then I'll wear my rainbow dash pin and, and that'll be it. All right. Has anyone ever asked you about it? No, no. I, I have a lot of hardcore Harley Davidson older guys, you know, shovelhead riders, guys that are, you know, oh, rah, 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 a couple of Harley, a couple of Hells Angels come around and I, I work with them and whatever. But, you know, none of these guys give a flying hell what I do in my spare time, as long as they get their parts. That's fair enough. So the next question is, you have a good singing voice. Have you considered you. or wanted to do singing or voice work professionally? Yes, I have. I thought that I could be a voice actor at one point. I actually did some voice acting for a friend of mine's animation when she was at CalArts. And... Uh, went over fairly well. It was kind of weird because she had a bunch of her friends do voice acting for this little short. And I played one character and then somebody saw it and said, no, he should play this character. So she had already animated the whole thing. So I actually had to go back and act to the film that was already done. So not only did I have to act correctly, I had to have the right inflection. I had to have the right feeling, but I had to do it to animation that was already done. <laughs> so that was fairly difficult. It took me like all afternoon to get it right. But that's a lot of what Tara Strong and the others do when they're actually doing voice work for when they're redubbing anime into English. So it's very difficult. I, I have all the, the respect in the world for a professional voice actor. His other question was, have you ever used ponies in other media outside the fandom? His example was, brought ponies at work, used pony artwork or music in other videos? Well, like I said, I wear my pin, I wear my Rainbow Dash pin on my collar at work. And I put Rainbow Dash stickers on my race bike. But I haven't really used them outside of, quote-unquote, fandom too much. I just haven't had the opportunity. You know, there wasn't a, a point where bringing pony into a conversation was a good idea at that point. You know, or whatever. I just haven't had the opportunity to weasel pony into the rest of my <laughs> rest of my life <laughs> at the moment. So I just continue to do what I do, and people bring it up at work. It's like, oh, I really like that one. That one was kind of cool, or something like that. I just haven't had the opportunity. But what about in daily life? Do you wear any pony apparel from, let's say, Wheel of Fine? I have two T-shirts right now. I've got one on order. I usually wear them around the house, or I wear them when we go out to dinner, or something mm -hmm. like that. So I don't wear them at work because I actually have a work uniform I have to wear. Yeah, so I don't wear them at work. But I'll wear them out to, say, go to the hot wing place with my friends. No one's ever commented on it. So it's like, okay, big I, bald guy with a mustache wearing a pony shirt. I don't think I'm going to ask him about it. <laughs> I don't think anybody dares to ask you about it. I had this really great thing happen. Um, here in America, when they had the McDonald's pony toys, I was going to McDonald's to collect pony toys. I was missing one, and I, I just I was driving past McDonald's. I just stopped in real quick. I said, okay, you guys have this pony. So, oh yeah! So I got my last pony. I'm sitting there eating my lunch, and I'm, I'm this kid comes in with his mom, and they come around the corner, and there's the display. We 
which has all the ponies and all the Transformers or whatever at the same time, right? And the kid's, like, got his hands in his pockets, and his shoulders are slumped down, and he's sort of like, Mom, you're embarrassing me. You kind of look. And she's, like, looking, oh, they might have this pony or they might have that pony. And the kid is like, Mom, you're embarrassing me. And I look straight in his eyes. He looks at me, kind of like he had some sort of recognition, right? And I go back <laughs> to him. So as I'm about to leave, I walk out to my truck. And as I, I'm back in my truck out of my parking spot, he and his mom come walk into the car, and he looks at me straight through the windshield, looks at me, and then you could see the light bulb go. <laughs> and his eyes got really big, and I just waved at him. Hi. And he just took off. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he actually recognized who I was, and was like, at the last minute. Like, yeah, the man least in the world can come in at McDonald's and get his ponies. <laughs> Fine with me. Kind of thing. So, well, uh, this story was epic. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of fun. Also, just like a comment from News Pony, he says like he likes the Rainbow the Speedy Pony Carol song. It's a very creative piece that is bright, cheerful, and all around happy. Just a note oh, from thank him. you. Thank <laughs> you. So on to my question, and you said the Mendes Bruni in the world. So um, how did you get that title, the Mendes Bruni in the world? I gave it to myself. What was funny was I was trying to come up with something funny to do. You know, I was doing the singing thing, and. The Dos Equis commercials here in the States are, you know, the most interesting man in the world. I'm not sure they have them down there in Malaysia. Uh, I don't no, think so. I don't. Okay. But um, the Dos Equis brand of beer has uh, an advertising campaign here in the States, which is the most interesting man in the world. And he's this older guy with gray hair, and he does all these wonderfully interesting things, right? And it's always in the commercials. It's like, he does this, he does this, he does this. And Is that the I don't use the knee guy? Yeah, he says, I don't usually drink beer, but when I do, I drink Dos Equis. Uh-huh. So me and my roommate rewrote that. And it's like, okay, well, what would it, what, what's the funny line? Well, I don't always watch cartoons for little girls, but when I do, I watch My Little Pony. So we came up with some of these lines and then thought, hey, we'll just film this thing. So it took like two and two and a half hours, maybe, to film the stuff and get it right and then cut all the stuff in. I just threw it up as a funny. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. It was just, yeah, it's funny, ha, 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 we'll see what people think. And then cheeseburger meme picked it up, and another meme picked it up, and then six websites in Japan picked it up. Oh god! Wow! And then then Ghost Politics tweeted about it, and then oh my goodness, it just took off it, at, at its height. You know, I checked Google, and it was the first six pages of Google returns were my video. Oh, wow. If you put in Stay Brony or, or Stan Manly, my friends, or or Brony or anything, it was the first six pages of Google. Which absolutely floored me. I was like, oh my goodness, what did I do? I was kind of scared at the start. I was like, oh my goodness. And then it just kept, people kept loving it and loving it and loving it. And then you have your haters came in and I, I basically band hammered all those guys. And it just, <laughs> it's still, it still gets 500 to 1,000 views a day. I mean, I just cracked 293,000 views. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, I don't, I don't get like million plus views like Mando Pony or any of those guys, but I just keep doing what I do and people continue to enjoy it. I'll keep doing it. Every time when I Google the word the Mendes Bruni in the world and the first picture that turns up on Google is your picture. It's kind of a quick and easy way to show my friends, hey, look at this guy. I'm interviewing him. Or look at this guy. He likes ponies. Yep. I mean, yeah, a, quick... lot of, a lot of people have said that to me. A lot of, a lot of kids have said, you know, when I get in an argument with this kid at school and it's like, you know, ponies aren't male. And he, he just pulls it up on his iPhone and goes, no, that guy. See that? That's mainly. So, <laughs> you know, if I can help people a little bit that way, then I have more power to them, and I love it. I was the over, oversensitive, oversized big kid who got picked on in school. So if I can help kids at any point, you know, not get bullied or not, you know, that's that's just a icing up. There are a lot of closet bronies out there. So in that context, would you actually, you know, be part of the kind of people who like them to come out? I don't like people saying closet and coming out. <laughs> And oh. just fan, okay? Because that has an entirely different connotation than just being in a fandom, okay? Because uh, well, what do you mean by that? It, it, oh. it almost it almost legitimizes people saying that being a brony is like being gay, and oh, it's not, okay. okay? Basically, you either like something or you don't like something, okay? And like you should at no no point in your life, unless it's illegal, be embarrassed about liking something. Okay, I like a colorful show with cartoon ponies in it that just happened to be made for little girls, but guess what? It's better than that. So why am I embarrassed about liking a cartoon show? I'm 44 years old. I grew up with Walt Disney. I grew up with imported anime 
Speed Racer, came with the White Lion, you know, Voltron, Gotchaman. When I was a kid, you know, I was indoctrinated with cartoons when I was a little kid. So why shouldn't I continue to like them as an adult? It doesn't make any sense. There's no reason that people should have to put away childish things just because they're childish. You don't have to do that. If you like it, you like it. My father, my dad, if you think I'm manly, if you think I'm manly, <laughs> if you see my dad, okay, would get up every Saturday morning and come downstairs and watch Thundar the Barbarian, the cartoon, on Saturday mornings with us because wow. it was his favorite cartoon. Okay? My dad, who was a factory worker at Ford Motor Plant and played men's softball and hunter and all that stuff, would come down Saturday mornings to watch cartoons with us. Apple don't fall far from the tree. And awesome man to this day. There's no reason, no reason to put away childish things just because somebody says they're childish. A bunch of horse apples. I got a little new name for Dusty here. I'm going to call him Qui-Gon Cat. <laughs> what? It's like a Jedi master right here speaking to us in all this philosophy. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, uh, here's a question that is a bit self-serving. What's your reaction when I invited you on as a guest on Malaysia's very first, possibly only, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic podcast? Fairly flattered that uh, you would want to, um, you know, this American guy to come talk in your Malaysian show. I mean, it's one of those things where, oh my God, people in Malaysia know who I am? Oh my goodness. So, um, <laughs> it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit frightening and a little bit, uh, you know, wow, people around the world know who I am. You know? So, uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to be here. A little bit spooked, a little bit, you know, oh my God, but it's, it's all good. By any chance, have you ever been to Malaysia? No, actually, I haven't been to Malaysia. I've been to Taiwan, and I've been to South Korea, and that's it. I'd love to go to Japan. I've heard about Malaysia. I don't know much about Malaysia at all. I'm very sorry for that. Anyway, since we're talking about Malaysia, um, if Malaysia was to have its very own Bruni convention, and you were invited as a guest, would you come to the convention? If somebody else paid for it, that's a hell of a plane ticket. <laughs> yeah, that's like a two thousand dollar plane ticket, my my friend. Oh boy, there yeah. are people Jap- here planning to go for BronyCon New York, though. Jap- yeah, Japan, Japan alone is like sixteen hundred dollars. Wow, Malaysia, Malaysia's got to be about two grand. It's not cheap in American dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's so. true. I mean, we have a lot of budget airlines coming up right now, mm-hmm. free tickets and stuff. But there's nothing of nothing of such to the states yet. Yeah, but, but if somebody if somebody invited me to a con half the world away and paid for it yeah I'd go absolutely yeah, you know, that's I would how do everything I, everything I could to make their con the best it was yeah, that's how it works usually when somebody invites somebody from abroad they have to pay their plane tickets and hotel and you know yeah. all the usual stuff well not always some cons will invite you and say we can only afford the hotel room or we can only afford the the airplane ticket and you can either accept or deny so uh, it, it, it depends here in the states it's not always that cut and dry so um, let's move on to the question from the Facebook members. Um, okay. Who shall we start with? Um, Emilio, why don't you start with um, Samuel's question? All right. Uh, a question from Samuel Mui. In your opinion, where do you see the Brony fandom within the next five years? Five years? I hope it's still here. In five years, there might not be a show. You're talking about if Brony fandom's around for five more years, that means we've got seven seasons. So that's a lot of pony. So... I'm not sure it's going to go that far. I'm not sure that the show is going to go seven seasons. So if the Brony fandom is still around in five years, you know, whereas it's you know Star Trek is, has been around for thirty, and you've sci-fi has been around, I would like to say that it's probably going to be almost where it is today, maybe a little less, depending on how many people just stop when the show stops. And there'll be those people, those people that you know we don't have any more new pony content, so I'm going to go do something else. Um, so you're saying that the fandom is kind of at its peak now. Um, I don't think it's at its peak. I think it's after, in the middle of next season, or next season's going to be the last season, you're going to see the peak probably sometime in, at the end of the last season, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're going to have it fall backwards a little bit. You know, people are going to go off and do other things, you know, because there's no new pony, so they're going to go do something else. So if pony fandom in five years is as big as it is right now, then I think we're ahead of the game. Um, Daniel, why don't you ask the next question? Oh, man, I wanted that question. Oh, you want to... Uh, okay, why don't you take it? Okay, cool. Can I take it? Because this question is just epic. Okay, I'm, okay. Gonna, I'm, I'm just going to say it out loud. As, as we sweat metal eyes... <laughs> okay, how do you pronounce his name? How can I be as awesome like you? Um, grow old. <laughs> yeah, you Have experience. 
have experiences. I went through a lot in my life to get where I am today. A lot. Most of it I won't tell anybody. I was bullied as a child. I survived it. I went to college, was bullied, survived it. Had many bad jobs, survived them. Went to a trade school, graduated, had a couple of bad jobs after that, but learned what a good job is. Had a great job between a couple of places. Have a great family who supports me. Have in and out of five or six or seven relationships with women that went bad or went good and didn't end correctly or whatever. And all those are scars that will teach you when you get to a point where I am, you know, what is good and what is not. And you just have to keep your eyes open for experience and learn from your experiences so that later on in life you can look back at it and laugh and go, man, was I an idiot when I was a kid. Or I can stop being an idiot and I can be, I can do what I want when I want and don't have to listen to other people poo-pooing what I do. So all I can tell you is keep your head on straight, like what you like. If somebody's giving you hell about it, tell them, you know, why should I even listen to you? What's your opinion to me? I don't really care. You know, I'm going to continue doing what I do because I like doing it. If you don't like it, go do something else. So it's most of is having confidence in yourself that, you know, you're going to be okay, that you don't have to listen to everybody say whatever. I mean, people have to listen to your parents, of course, but when you get away from your parents and you graduate high school or you graduate college and you get out there on your own, have some confidence in yourself that every now and then you're going to make a mistake, but learn from it and you're going to end up okay in the end. Kids, Qui-Gon Kat has spoken. Okay. Um, Tash, why don't you take the next question? Our next question comes from Morphus Baharon. His question is, assuming you go to meetups and stuff, what kind of reaction have you seen from the general public when the Boney communities have their meetups? I actually haven't been to a local meetup, so I can't really tell you. I mean, I've been to different fandoms where the public loves it or they hate it. I mean, some people really get into it and really love it, and other people go, oh man, you guys are a bunch of freaks. It's like, it, it's 50-50. So I think it's about the same way with Brony people. But as long as bronies don't go prophesizing, you know, they're not up on the mount with two, two, uh, uh, the, the, the Ten Commandments of brony, then, <laughs> then, then they're fine. You know, it's like, you like it, fine. If, if you show it to somebody and they say, I don't really like that, then stop pressing it, okay? They don't like it, fine. They, they have as much right to not like something as you have to like it. So and it doesn't matter if you think it, their opinion is, is flawed. You don't have to go and try to prove it to them that pony is the greatest thing since sliced bread because it's not it's great but it's not the greatest thing since sliced bread so some people need to back the hell off sometimes and go okay well you don't like it thank you very much we'll move on and find somebody else who does it's not a religion people it's just a fun fandom what does being a brony mean to you dusty besides the love for pastel colored equine <laughs> being a brony is just sort of like a label you know like any other label like a sci-fi fan or a furry fan or a fan of Twilight, the, the vampire stuff. It's just a label. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, I would still be a Pony fan if there wasn't a label that said Brony. It's kind of difficult to answer that question because it's just, I'm me and I do what I do, and if people want to come along for the ride, all the merrier. You know? So it doesn't matter what it's called. They could flip it around and call the girls Bronies and us Pegasus sisters. I don't really give a... Yay! Excuse oh, my French. Right. Okay, no problem. <laughs> well, because, yeah, it's only one part of you you are. It's not... Oh, yeah, it's, it, it's only know. one small part of what I do with my life. I mean, I race motorcycles. I'm a motorcyclist. I'm in two other fandoms doing stuff. I draw. I do a whole bunch of different stuff. So it's like being a brony is a very small part of who I am. I mean, if somebody puts like 100% of their life into being a brony, then maybe you've gone a little bit too far. I mean, it's one of those things where it's just something fun to do. For me, it happens to have gotten me a little bit of fame, but that's just because it's what I like to do. But I don't put 100% of my effort every day into Brony because I've got a house to clean and dinner to cook and dogs to pet and a motorcycle to fix and ro roads to ride. So it's just a small part of what I do. Words of wisdom from Dusty. Moving on to the next question. Oh, this might be sensitive. Um, have you ever met a Brony you didn't like? And if so, what made you dislike him? I've met a couple of Bronies I don't like. Mostly it's a difference of morals and opinion. Whereas certain people do certain things. This is sort of like what I said earlier. I don't happen to like what they're doing within the Brony fandom, but that's not my place. It's not my place to tell them to stop because, one, it's not illegal. So 
who am I to tell them to stop doing that? It's not my place. I don't have to like it. I don't have to talk to those people or do anything with those people because it's something that I don't condone. So I can go and continue doing what I like to do within the Brony community and not let them affect me because they can go do what they want. Free country, whatever they want to do. Don't care. But as soon as I start letting them affect me, then it's my problem. So I don't let them affect me. I was like, okay, we've had a, a discussion about it. They have their opinion. I have my opinion. And neither the two shall meet. So they can go do their thing. I don't care. Done. Okay. But just don't try to convince me that I should accept that because I'm not going to accept it because it's against whatever I feel. Right. So I, and I just move on. So, but I, I'm not going to, you know, go out of my way to make their lives a living hell because it's none of my business. And as long as they don't try to make their business my business, then I don't have a problem. That's a good way of going about it. So, last question for Morpheus is, has anyone told you that you look like Paul Sr. from American Choppers? <laughs> yes. Wow. People, people have asked me, did you grow your beard because of Paul Sr.? It's like, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> I've worked with those guys. It's one of those things where I'm me. When I had long hair and a ponytail, people confused me with uh, James Hetfield from Metallica. Well... <laughs> I've had people mistake me for a high-end pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. But no, it's one of those things where Paul Sr.'s Paul, I'm me, and it's one of those things where I don't actually see the uh, Similarity? resemblance. Uh, yes. He's much older than I am, for one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, has anyone made the same mistake I did and thought you were Jamie Hanneman? Nope, haven't had a Jamie Hanneman yet. Uh, every time I think of Destiny, it's like I, I keep thinking of Ali from Epic Meal Time for some reason. <laughs> I I, you know, after I put my cooking video up, somebody said, you should do something with Epic Meal Time. And I said, they probably wouldn't have me. <laughs> so, so. I'm too afraid to think what they want to do a show with you. Yeah, I would I would be pretty afraid. It's like, oh, we're going to do horse meat. I would <laughs> no! no. I, would, I would kill all three of them. <laughs> Not another Anthony Bourdain. They, no. would, they wouldn't get out of the freaking studio. <laughs> It would be cupcakes all over. <laughs> no. Okay, then oh, what? God, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> Have mercy on the kid. Okay, anyway, um, Daniel, why did you take this one? Calvin Fun Time on Facebook, and he has a very, very simple question. How, how tough are you? That's subjective to other people. I'm as tough as I need to be, basically. I don't go out looking for trouble, but if trouble comes in pop, I will take care of it. But I don't go looking for trouble. If you want to know how tough I am, okay. As a, you guys know American football, correct? Yep. Uh-huh. Yep. All right. So as a junior in high school, we were 45 miles away at a scrimmage just before the season started. And I'm playing left defensive end. And as a gentleman comes along the line and blocks me down, the running back's going behind him. So to try and stop him, I arm around the gentleman, put my arm against his shoulder, and grab the running back who's going behind him. That snapped both of my forearm bones oh. in half. Okay. And I fell to the ground with my arm under me. Ooh. And my buddy comes around, and I can't get up. I don't know why, because I can't see my arm. And I put my arm up, and I say, dude, help me up. And he comes around and looks at me and walks away just as queasy. <laughs> but what? What the heck is wrong? He said, dude, you broke your arm. I didn't break my arm. No, I, I would feel it if I broke my arm. No, you broke your arm. Don't move. And the coach has come over and said, don't move. Don't get up. Don't get up. What are you talking about? I'm fine. No, you're not. <laughs> because they raised me up just long enough that if you looked at the center of my left forearm, it did an S bend. Oh. oh. Okay. My arm, my hand would be about six inches taller than it would be if it was straight. And my forearm S bend. So if I actually tried to touch my left ear, I'd be scratching the top of my head. Oh, wow. And I went, oh. And the, the only thing that went through my mind was I was the starting kicker that season. And I completely, because I broke my arm. I wasn't thinking about pain. I wasn't thinking about anything other than I lost my entire season kicking. So the ambulance comes, and they put me on the stretcher, and six guys have to pick me up and carry me off the football field because the stretcher wouldn't go through the grass. <laughs> so the one guy goes, damn, Dusty, you're heavy, and this guy is like the heaviest guy in the team, right? He's <laughs> rotund. So I said, me, if we had you up here, we'd be dropping this stinking thing, and everybody about dropped me because they all... <laughs> so they get me to emergency care and cut my jersey off and take all my pads off and everything and my arm looks really great so they take all the all the freaking x-rays they can that's green twig it's not actually broken off it's a green twig so it's still hanging on at certain little points but it looked it looks spectacular back in 1984 85 they didn't go in and pin anything they didn't have that technology yet they just basically 
pulled on your arm and started putting it back in. <laughs> so sure enough, no anesthetic, no nothing. My coach is pulling on my fingers and the doctor goes, <laughs> and I'm like off the table trying to keep myself from screaming. And he says, I think I got it in. Take more x-rays. Nope. <laughs> Maybe. Nope. Coach pulls on my fingers again, and he just goes, Ning, and he starts moving all these bones around. And finally, it's this unsickening pop. <laughs> and my arm goes back in, and I'm like gritting my teeth, but I'm not screaming. And take the x-rays, goes, well, that's close. What do you mean, like, close? <laughs> so I think that's right. So he puts this fiberglass cast on me. It's the first time I fiberglass had come out as casting material. So he puts this fiberglass <laughs> cast on me. Too tight. I get home, go to bed. I get up, my fingers are purple. So my parents rush me to the hospital, cut the stinking thing off. They take more x-rays and I say, yeah, it's, it's good. And they put a plaster cast on. It was so far off that I can't turn my left hand over anymore. If you take your left hand and you put it out and then you go palm up, my hand only goes about 45 degrees because my forearm bones are, are busted. That's my tough guy story. But yeah, that happened. Well, wow. I have to say that is tough. I, I, mm. I am between hungry and losing my appetite. <laughs> So yeah, if you want to talk tough, yeah, break break up two or three bones and, and uh, figure and, it out. Okay, um, um, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> okay, um, the next question is from Sylvester Shinagabi Cheng. He asks, how long does it take to grow such an amazing mustache like yours? I started growing this mustache in 1987. So this mustache is older than many people in this fandom. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But if I shaved it all off, it would probably take me a month to get it back. I grow beard fairly fast. But yeah, it's, it hasn't been off my face since 1987. So um, the last question, um, who wants to take it? Um, it's from an interesting person. Uh, I guess the, I guess you should take it. Okay. Um, um, one Pink and Mina Diana Pie asks... How do you keep your mustache clean? And I got no idea. Is it the same Pinky Mina Diana pie or is it a different one? It's probably the same. Oh boy. How do I keep it clean? Um, yes. I wash my face and I have a mustache comb. Basically, it's like washing any other part of your hair and then just comb it. Do you use any products on your mustache? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Because that, that was one of the questions that I thought was a bit silly. So anyway, um, question asked and it has been answered. So anyway, um, those are all the questions from us. Do you guys have any more? Uh, I have one. <laughs> okay, please do. I'm just curious if anyone has actually recognized you on the streets. Dusty, like, has anyone actually recognized you and said, Oh my gosh, you're Dusty, can I have a picture with you? That sort of thing. Um, I was recognized at a convention in January as being the man they in the world. But on the street, I think that one story I gave you about the kid in the McDonald's was about the closest thing oh. to somebody actually recognizing me on the street. Although I, I did start exercising. I, we have a, a nice five-mile loop that I and, and I was doing my jog, I think it was about half a month ago. And as I'm going along, do 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 this car turns left in front of me to go down the street. And on the back window in soap is written, I'm the pony every pony should know. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so I think that was a brony, but I could be wrong. Someone driving a brony's car. Wow. <laughs> Or someone driving a brony's car. So I I mean, I have a We Love Fine sticker on my dad's car because I don't own a car. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I was cheerily hanging from the, the rear view mirror on my truck. My big black Ford truck. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I like the cheerily on your computer. Yeah, that was fun. It took me a while to get that to look right. <laughs> I think that's all the questions we asked, right? So, um, Dusty, do you have any questions for us? Oh, that's interesting. Um, how big is the Malaysian brony community? Mm, who wants to answer this? Because I I came to the fandom really late. I mean, the yeah. Malaysian Brony Society on Facebook is basically where most of the bronies in Malaysia congregate. And um, what's the current number headcount for the Malaysian Brony Society? It's about 337. Ah, that's pretty good. That's more than I would think. Well, Singapore has 400. Nice. I think it's due to the show not being aired here yet. Oh, okay. So it's aired in Singapore. I'm thinking if the show aired, we might get a little bit more. Yeah, probably. You probably would. So, if I remember correctly, you guys are going actually into fall, whereas we're going into summer. Or is that backwards? Mm. Um, we don't really have seasons. We're so close to the equator that it's oh, that's right. all year long. Yeah, so, like, summer. summer. Hot. No. You guys are summer 24-7, 365. Yeah, not really. Yeah. Basically, our weather is shine or rain. 
<laughs> Basically, it's getting so crazy. Monsoon or sun? <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> When I go to university, I park my car. By the time class is over, around three o'clock, sometimes I go back and the car has become a sauna. <laughs> so hot. Well, my car is big and black, so <laughs> yeah, works. Anyway, um, I think that's it for any questions. Um, unless Dusty, you have more questions for us? No, I'm pretty cool. Okay, thank you, Dusty, for this lovely interview. You're welcome. So, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow at gmail dot com. And also, you can reach us on Twitter. And the MBS Show has its own Twitter page. It's at the MBS Show. And I'm at Norman Sanzo. And I'm at King of Cuteness. I'm at Saint Pinky. And I'm at Tasha Irina. And, and I'm at Dusty underscore Cat K A T. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes. The links will be provided in the show notes. Everybody, make sure that you come and check me out on EverFreeRadio.com Monday nights. That's 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. Monday evenings where I get to interview somebody from the fandom or just entertain you somehow for an hour and a half. So come check me out. We'll sure do. And I've been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Emilio Daniel. And I've been Tasha Irina. And I'm Daniel Anthony. And I'm just the manliest bro in the world. And we'll see you later. Up and down, up and down.